The support on the previous episodes has been incredible, so thank you all for that. I appreciate it. Welcome back to another episode of our My Player Career Mode, my friends. I hope I find you all doing very well, having an awesome day. We've got four matches coming your way today, including a double against Fiorentina. We take them on in the league, but we've also then got them in the first leg of the Coppa Italia semi-finals. And if we've got time, we might have a fifth game up against Bologna. And then in the not too distant future, we've got our Europa League quarterfinal tie against RB Leipzig. That will be next episode. So for now, sit back, relax and enjoy today's video. Let's aim for 700 likes on this episode. As I say, the support has been incredible. So big like target today, but let's see if we can achieve it. First up, Fiorentina away at their place in the league. Fitness, an issue for a number of players. But we'll manage that. And if we need to, we won't play a full 90 minutes here. We'll ask for a substitution ahead of the extra games we've got. We've actually got a game with England as well coming up against Ireland in a European Championship qualifier, which is a crucial one as well because we're currently third in our group. So, yeah, that's in like two or three days after this. Last episode, if you already saw it, you'll know this, but we lost our second league game of the season, falling to a 3-0 defeat against Roma. They were... The only other side to beat us after Juventus. And speaking of Juventus, we currently sit seven points clear of them. That's a brilliant ball through. Yes. Milan in front. We are seven points clear of Juventus, but we do have a game in hand, which is against Fiorentina here. So victory will take us back 10 points clear of them. And we need to make sure we do win this game. We've managed to restabilize really well following that 3-0 defeat to Roma and have been able to win our other games we played. Nice finish here as we're found. And it's just a side foot curled into the far corner past the goalkeeper half time whistle goes here Milan 1 Fiorentina 0 very quiet first half but we're ahead and that's what matters Benasser now Wahi Wahi nice finds myself can we pull the ball back to Bernardo we can it's blocked by quarter but it's picked back up by Wahi Milan trying to add a second Benasser it's Bernardo Bernardo into my feet as Bar's now supporting we find him as he goes to the back here, we'll pick it up, though. This is really, really dangerous for Fiorentina because they can't seem to get the ball clear. As Liao will turn and he'll find the second. That pressure was mounting and it's come good for AC Milan. Liao's 30th in 30 league matches. Incredible. Actually, it's not quite his 30th in 30. I thought he had a goal a game, but it's 29 in 30 for Liao. However, there is still half an hour to go here for him to find his 30th. So we'll look to give him that, as here is Bernardo trying to get around Gaia. Concedes the throw. Milan have it deep in Fiorentina's half. Pressure straight back on them again, as we're found with the throw. Now Hernandez. Why is he out here taking the throw is my question, though. Playing left back, and he's over on the right-hand side to take a throw. Don't know what's going on there. Benacer. Hernandez has made his way back over to that left-hand side, and here he is. Teo Hernandez around Hendricks. Hernandez is crossed. Too close to Demirovic. Liao was challenging. Good hands, though, from the goalkeeper. Into added time now. Milan have got the job done here. We did have a substitution as well. Reinders came on for me as we keep one mind on our fitness. First game of the day, though. It will be a victory. An early preview of the semi-final of the Coppa Italia. And Milan, who are favourites for that, have lived up to expectations and beaten Fiorentina in the league. But cup ties are always different. And just to remind ourselves of England's struggles in these European Championship qualifiers, five games, four draws, one win, only scoring one goal. Yep, Ireland up next. Have to win this. We're third. Italy on eight points. Portugal are on 11. England captained by John Stones. Look how good that England team is. Harry Kane forward here towards Marcus Rashford. At the moment, England's only goal of these European Championship qualifiers has come through Bakayo Saka. This is nice, though, from Rashford and Jude Bellingham. And there's an air of optimism around Wembley. And that is because they sense there could well be goals in this one. No disrespect to Ireland, but they're struggling themselves. Only got one point in these European Championship qualifiers. If there's ever a game to start scoring, it's potentially this one for England. And inside the first five minutes, Rashford and Bellingham combine and Marcus Rashford with a finish has scored England second. And this could be the game now that propels England forward in these remaining European Championship qualifiers. We've got this game and then two more. I think those are against Italy and Portugal, if I'm not mistaken as well. So not easy games, but we could head into those off the back of a great result here against Ireland. 
Trying to put pressure on Collins here and force a mistake, which we have done. Want it back, but still work to be done if we want a chance as we'll drive England forwards here. Wait for Rashford. There he is. It's Marcus Rashford. It's 2-0 England. Ten minutes to go until half time. We need to make this a comfortable win. And we stole the ball back, but then we had work to do still to find the chance because... Ireland did recover quickly, but they don't pick up the run of Marcus Rashford. You can see there as he goes into a central position. And the left foot finish grabs his brace. And England's second of the game. He's on fire in this one. England had three shots in that first half, scoring two of them. So not as if we dominated the first half by any means, but clinicalness was on show. With Marcus Rashford scoring both of his efforts. As ben Chilwell at the start of this second half finds the feet of Bellingham. Bellingham forward to myself. I'm going to try and take it early. And see if we can catch Travers out. Corner ball England. That's the fourth shot of the game. Alexander-Arnold. Sasaka takes it on the turn. Now forward for Rashford. He's got Kane to his... In fact, it's Bellingham to his left. And Jude Bellingham's there. I just automatically assumed it was going to be Harry Kane as the striker. But no, it was not. It was Jude Bellingham. Popping up in a striker's position. And applying a striker's finish. I didn't actually look immediately to see who it was in that position. But again, Kane dropping deep, allowing Bellingham to run from midfield. It's such a strange sight, though, seeing the fact that Harry Kane is deeper than a central midfielder. And yet, he scores the goals that he does, Harry Kane. It really is strange to see. Regardless, beautiful finish by Bellingham. England are 3-0 up. I mean, how on earth did we just work that? We had an England free kick on the right-hand side. I accidentally pressed A for a short pass and still was able to work a chance. And Phil Foden with a header has got England's fourth. I wasn't commentating because I thought I messed up the free kick by accidentally passing it backwards. But there you go. I mean, it's terrible goalkeeping from Travers, actually. Terrible. Absolutely abysmal. England won't care. They've quadrupled their goal tally from the start of this game to the end. And that's the full-time whistle then. Another victory for us. Two more games to go in these European Championship qualifiers. There's a chance to put even more pressure on Juventus here. They play the day after us as we take on Parma. And a victory will move us 13 clear. They will have that game in hand. But if they fail to win it, we'll pick up yet more points on Juventus. Benasur now finding the feet of Bernardo, who's in place of Benton Kerr in that central midfield area. Slides it through into that gap. Quick fire, quick turn, but... Not a great effort. Over the bar, always rising. I mean, that's a foul on Hernandez. That is a foul. The player's made no attempt. I can't believe that's going to stand. Hernandez is trying to recover back to block the cross. And the player who's not even on the ball blocks his run. I mean, it's terrible defending by Milan to start with. But then when the cross goes in back post, we still should deal with it. Palmer have just taken the lead. And the inquest will be going on with the Milan players asking the referee. There. Number 39, is it? Blocks the run of Hernandez. Can't get back. But who's picking up the man at the back post? Well, it's just shocking defending, really. Which we haven't said too many times about this Milan side this season. And Palmer take a shock lead here at the San Siro. But again, it's a foul on Hernandez. Maybe I'm clutching at straws a little bit with the foul call on Hernandez for Palmer's goal. But you can clearly see that the Palmer player knows exactly what he's doing by running across Hernandez and blocking his run. So I still feel that that should be picked up. That's a great ball forward, though. And now we can take it in our stride and look to try and create an equaliser for Milan. Didn't really touch upon that when I said about us winning the game and putting pressure on Juventus. Liao's in! Yes! There's that equaliser. Didn't really touch upon this. But of course, if we lose to Palmer, then that gives a lot of inspiration in the way of Juventus to win their game and close the gap. So I was talking about us potentially opening the gap up. Don't want it to be closed. Liao gets our equaliser. Still plenty of time here as well to go on and win the game, as you would expect us to do. Chukweze, start of the second half. Can we get this goal early at the start of the second half? I imagine the boss was not too happy with his half-time team. Talk as we try to place it on the right foot and Turk goes flying to the right-hand side to deny us. As I say, I imagine the boss was not very happy with his team talk at half-time, letting us know his thoughts and feelings in a game that we... Should be winning. Palmer just set out the relegation zone at the moment. So they're down near the bottom. They're not in a relegation fight because they are seven points clear of the um, third relegation spot. But they are very much down the bottom half of the table. Chukweze slide that through. He has done. Now then we need to pick the right pass here. As we find Liao. There is that right pass. 
And Palmer, that's what we expected to see. Not what they were doing to us previous, which was frustrating Milan. And actually having a very good game. And it's Chukweze wins it back. I have the easy job of finding you-know-who, who then does the job of finishing. And he's now up to a goal a game in Serie A. Bernardo, Liao, much more like it from Milan now. You can see that we've entered our groove. We've entered our free scoring, free chance states as the deflected shot from Chukweze is tipped over the bar. Milan corner, Liao delivers. Not the best of crosses. It's away further, but it's picked up here by Bernardo who sends it forward. And I've just done enough on the turn there to get away and find a way into the area of Palmer and now work it back out towards Bernardo. Edge of the penalty area for him. He will find Benasur. Benasur finds Wahi. Wahi to Liao. Liao slides it through. Oh, it's delightful. It is delightful. Just how quickly that ball moved. The little intricacy. And then the finish at the end. 3-1 Milan. And there's that little telepathic link, as I've said many times, between us and Liao. It's funny, actually, because in FIFA 23, he's my player. He was the one who helped us win the Champions League. And now in EFC 24, we're doing it all over again with Rafa Liao. Heading to glory, hopefully. And that is going to do us here for this one against Palmer at the San Siro. Bit of a scare early on with the goal going in. But following that, Milan are able to make sure the points are going with us. We go 13 clear at the top of Serie A. Juventus, it's over to you. What result will you get? You need to win to take it back to 10. And as we advance today forwards, we will see that result for Juventus. We've also got semi-final against Fiorentina. So let's have a look then. Serie A, what was the Juventus result? They do close it back to 10, which means they beat Empoli two goals to one. Seven games to go, 10 points the gap. But... We now go to the Coppa Italia, our first leg against Fiorentina, the second game against them today. Let's see if we can make it two wins from two. Away to them first for this first leg. There is a few changes in the team, but it's still a fantastic Milan side. Here is Werner. Werner trying to open up the shots. We do not allow it. Winning it back. Now Reinders. Hernandez back the way of Reinders. Fiorentina, very high press here. So we've got to be careful. And we weren't careful because you can see possession. Werner into the area of... Milan back out to Infantino. This has been a good start from the home side. Sanchez, Poku! Mainian saves. As I say, good start from Fiorentina. Milan just trying to do their usual thing of playing out from the back. Unable to really do it. That's a great header by Chukweze. Now there's a chance to break here for AC Milan as we'll use our pace to drive forward and now play it the way of Wahi. Trying still to support. Wahi slides it back into my path. We open it on the left foot was straight at Christensen. Although he hasn't done well there. Oh, it's off the line. What on earth just happened? It was a poor effort as we hit it straight at him. Just didn't wrap my foot around it enough to curl it into the far corner. But then he punches the ball into the air and it nearly goes in his own goal. It's cleared off the line. Reinders, Mandragora's tackles, good. But it's worked here for Liao and Liao's got it through. It's just not quite catching these shots correctly. I mean, there's the replay of Hendrick's goal line clearance. Definitely didn't cross the line, the ball. It is a Milan corner. We've had two efforts now. Saved twice by Fiorentina's goalkeeper. Schurz, edge of the penalty area, goes back my way. We play it out wide here towards Liao. Chips it back in. There's the header. It's another one. And again, how has it stayed out? Two headers and we sent both of them to the goalkeeper. I can't believe I've not scored. First effort, straight at him. Not really great. I should have wrapped my foot around the ball a lot more. Here is Poku. Do not concede now, though, Milan. I'm shook. I don't know how we haven't scored. Then the second one, with my left foot, we force him into the save. The third one is a double header, and it should be in. It was an, it was an open goal, and I headed it straight to the goalkeeper. What am I doing? Wahi. Shoots blocked. Oh, my goodness. How is it not 1-0, Milan? The smile on my face right now is one of disbelief, because... All I had to do was head the ball either side of the goalkeeper and we score. And somehow I headed it straight at him. Just got to try and continue on now for the rest of this game and try and find the breakthrough in this second half. That ball forward for Bernardo. Still a lot of Fiorentina players though behind the ball. Bernardo finds me. We go to Reinders. Reinders will shoot. Christensen saves. Half an hour still left to play. It's 
Oh, Milan, you've got to say that, but we can't seem to find the breakthrough. Corner goes in to absolutely no one in a Milan shirt. Mandragora heads away, back out here towards Reinders. Reinders finds me, quickly inside to Schurz. Schurz, still work to be done. Here is Bernardo. Bernardo now finding Reinders. Reinders combining with Bernardo, but look at this. It's so hard for Milan to find that opportunity to get something in the box because they're so set defensively. Hernandez throw. Now Bar. Bar into my feet. There's three players around me ultra attacking from the boss. I'm a little bit nervy about that because we know it does, does leave us a little bit exposed defensively. Bernardo, now Benton Kerr to Schurz. Everybody back for Fiorentina. Liao, Benasur, Benasur to myself, to Wahi. Wahi! Wide! Final 10 minutes of the game. Wahi to Liao, back to Ruben Diaz. He has got the pass to Benasur. Benasur has myself ahead of him. Now we've got Bernardo to our right. Bernardo, quick one, two. And we give it to Wahi. Wahi to Liao. Liao strike. Christensen saw it late, but it wasn't completely in the corner. Easy enough save. Milana trying, but not succeeding to find this goal. Go short to Bernardo. Inside for Wahi. Wahi holds on to it. Finds myself. Right-footed effort going to be blocked. And it's broke the way of Fiorentina. I mean, they had so many players behind the ball and yet now they're on the attack. Literally everyone was in their penalty area a minute ago. What's going on? Gaia. Now Jorko. They've done nothing apart from one shot, I think, which Mike Minion saved. So let's not. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. You just knew it. Sanchez scores. Fiorentina 1, Milan 0. I'm sort of just... In disbelief at how this first leg has gone. Christensen's has made, what, three, four, five saves. Including a double when I had all the goal to aim at and I headed it straight at him. Oh, come on. Seriously, how, how on earth have we lost this 1-0? It means we've got a big job to do in the second leg. But quite frankly, I'm absolutely livid by the fact that we're going to lose this. Oh! And I've sort of... Let the misses get to me a little bit in terms of those chances that I had because it's not been my finest game in a Milan shirt. And that's the way it goes sometimes. You just have to put those misses behind you and then carry on, which I've tried to do, but it's not mattered. And Fiorentina take advantage into the second leg. The treble is on the ropes for Milan. We'll have to see what happens in the next episode. Huge second leg to play then at the San Siro next time out. Juventus have beaten Roma in their first leg by two goals to one. As for the Serie A as we go today, my friends, seven games to go, 10 points clear. Title is within our reach. Just keep doing what we're doing and it's ours. We do take on Juventus actually in, I think, the third to last game of the season. Might be the fourth to last game of the season. So... Yeah, we want to be in a position where once we get into that game, we don't have to worry about how that game goes. So the plan of action for the next episode will be Bologna into the double leg against Leipzig and Monza. So actually, we won't play Fiorentina until the episode after the next one. So stay tuned for that. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, a like would be greatly appreciated. As I say, 700 likes is the target. Subscribe if you are new around here and like what you see. Activate the notification bell as well so you don't miss any of the future videos. And until next time, stay safe. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Look after each other. And I'll see you all back here with more My Player in the very near future. Adios.